Hi, this is Li Fan. I am an assistant professor in computer science at UNC Charlotte. Today, I'm going to talk about our evaluation of location privacy. This talk is based on our recent paper at Six Spatial 2021. Today, I will also share new results generated after the paper's publication. Location data is critical to many applications and research studies. For instance, app users may receive recommendations based on their current location. Research studies may utilize GPS traces collected from participants to understand their mental health. While location data is extremely useful, it is also personal and sensitive. Furthermore, location data may be leaked. A recent incident leaked data about consumers of all major cellular carriers. Therefore, applications should pay close attention to the protection of consumer location privacy. The research community has developed many location privacy methods. A recent survey reviewed more than 60 methods. To ensure the depth of our study, we focused on those methods that adopt a local privacy model and sanitize data in an online fashion. The local model ensures the user relies on their own device to achieve privacy and send only sanitized locations out of their device. Users will have a great sense of control as they do not rely on any other parties to protect their privacy. Online privacy methods generate a sanitized location given the current location and or with historical data without knowing future places the user would visit. The advantage of the online methods is that the sanitized data can be shared with the server immediately which is helpful for real-time applications. Local online privacy methods hold great promises for practical deployment. For one reason, the setting is analogous to the local differential privacy model for non-location data adopted at Google and Apple. In Android, users can choose to share less precise locations with apps which can be considered as a simplified approach to local online privacy. Lastly, there have been research efforts to open source local online privacy methods to help developers integrate location privacy in their applications. Despite the promises and efforts, there are significant challenges in adopting location privacy. The first challenge is to understand the impact of location privacy on usefulness. Prior studies adopt simple utility measures, such as distance between input and sanitized locations. Therefore, it is not clear how location privacy may affect the usefulness of applications. For example, extracting mobility patterns from GPS traces. The second challenge is to understand the empirical privacy protection. The privacy models of existing methods are not directly comparable. For example, data deletion versus adding dummies versus differential privacy based. It is not yet clear how existing methods may mitigate practical attacks, such as inference attacks. The third challenge is to understand computational overheads of location privacy. As privacy methods run on client devices, overheads are very important factors for deployment, but so far they are understudied. The goals of our work is to address those challenges with an empirical evaluation of location privacy methods. Our study includes the following privacy methods that fit local and online criteria. They fall under three categories. First, there are generalization-based methods, which report less accurate data. One example method we show here is rounding. 
every input data will be rounded to its nearest grid point. The second category is perturbation-based methods, which introduce random noise in the data. As an example, the geo-in notion is based on differential privacy and can be achieved with the Laplace method showing this figure. Given an input, a reported location can be drawn from the planar Laplace distribution. The third category is dummy-based, where real location data is hidden among the dummies. For example, in the spot me method, a user can claim to be at multiple locations simultaneously, where only one cell reflects the real location. Our empirical evaluation adopts two GPS trace data sets generated via diverse transportation modes in order to evaluate location privacy in practical scenarios. The GeoLife dataset includes data from participants in Beijing, where the real buses dataset contains bus traces in Rio de Janeiro. We perform spatial and temporal discretization in each dataset. The two-dimensional geospace is partitioned into 300 meter by 300 meter grid cells. And for each user, we subsample their GPS record for every five minutes and generate one trajectory for every day. The number of trajectories per user and the number of unique locations that each user visits vary greatly as summarizing this table. Recently, we evaluated the usefulness of location privacy methods in two new applications. One, detecting whether two users visit the same place at the same time, which may benefit contact tracing and friendship discovery. Second, measuring the user's exposure to air pollutants as the user travels in the space. This may be extended to measure the user's exposure to neighborhood social disorder, drug activities, etc. Here we show the PM 2.5 levels for the city of Beijing, which will be used in conjunction with the GeoLife dataset. We also collected air pollution data to use with the real buses dataset. To evaluate the usefulness of location privacy, we adopt generic record level utility measures as well as task-based trace level utility measures. First, we include Hamming distance and Haversan distance between the input and sanitized locations. Also, we extract seven trace level mo mobility patterns, which were designed to predict mental health and we report their relative errors. An average error among all the mobility patterns is also computed. Moreover, we evaluated the usefulness of the sanitized location data for aggregated queries, such as the visit frequency of each location and two-dimensional range queries. In each experiment, we vary the privacy parameter of every privacy method to observe its impact on utility. Based on the complete set of records, we conclude that record level utility often, but not always, aligns with trace level utility. We observe cases where a small distortion in each record may lead to a large distortion in trace level mobility patterns. We evaluate the privacy methods on two new applications, which represent a wider range of use cases for location data. In the first application, we detect co-locating users and report a number of accuracy measures. One of them is false negative, which counts those user pairs who co-locate but are missed by looking at their sanitized trajectories. False negative errors are critical in contact tracing. And we can see most methods inflict false negatives, except the rounding method. In the second application, 
we measure the user's exposure to air pollution and report errors for using sanitized trajectories as opposed to real data. All methods inflict exposure azure errors to various extents. The highest errors are observed in spatial cloaking, which deletes real data for privacy protection. From these results, we observe that choosing the right methods and parameters is important for obtaining good utility. We measure the empirical privacy risks with two privacy attacks. One risk is re-identification, where the attacker has some prior knowledge about a target and tries to re-identify the target in the sanitized data set. Specifically, we check if a user can be uniquely re-identified when the attacker knows K of the target's location record. And we find the smallest K to re-identify each user. In real data, most of the users can be re-identified with no more than four locations. Some users are not unique, labeled as NRI. In general, after applying a location privacy method, fewer users can be re-identified and more users become non-re-identifiable. Another risk is attribute inference. Here we assume a strong attacker who has all but one location of the target and tries to infer the last record from the data set. In real data, more than 90% of the users are susceptible to inference attacks. After applying location privacy, the risk can be reduced to various extents. Looking at all results, we can conclude when configured properly, both DP and traditional privacy methods can provide protection against privacy attacks. When an adversary has additional knowledge about the applied privacy method and the parameter value, it can launch improved attacks. For example, in re-identification, the adversary can apply the same privacy method to the known locations of the target, and they can match the sanitized locations. From the results, rounding is less effective against the improved attack. The percentages uh, of non-re-identifiable users is much lower, and a significant amount of users can be re-identified at smaller K values compared to the basic attack. We can conclude with an advanced adversary, traditional deterministic methods may fail to protect user privacy. To quantify the computational overheads of location privacy methods, we measure the CPU time for sanitizing one location and the peak memory consumption by each method. We show that all methods are very efficient in CPU time. Some methods, such as SpotMe and VHC, require larger memory as they maintain internal data structures. The implementation of the studied privacy methods is available in Java. Application developers and researchers will find the complete set of results and discussions in the paper, which will help comparatively evaluate those privacy methods. To conclude, our results show that generic utility often but not always aligns with task-based utility. We find in basic attacks, both DP methods and traditional privacy methods provide protection. In improved attacks, deterministic privacy methods may fail to provide adequate protection. Choosing the right methods and parameters is very important for reducing privacy risks as well as boosting utility. Many of the methods show low CPU and memory requirements, which make them friendly to applications. Several students contributed to the project during their time at the research group. 
This research has been supported in part by the National Science Foundation. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.